Hey guys, it's Mallory here with All About Cats, and in this video, we're going to be taking an in depth look at Tiki Cat. So, first off, what is Tiki Cat? Tiki Cat was founded back in 2005 by Christine Hackett, who had been working in research and development for Petco, and while working on their private label program, became aware of some of the issues that were affecting uh, the pet food industry. So according to Tiki Cat lore, it was at this time that she recognized some of the problems in the way that pet food is manufactured and decided to make a new food that addressed some of those issues. So again, it was in 2005 that she and her husband founded a company of their own. And so that company was called Pet Tropics, and they produced both Tiki Cat and Tiki Dog foods under the Tiki Pets heading. But since 2015, Tiki Cat has been a part of White Bridge Pet Brands, which resulted from the merger of Tiki Pets and a brand called Cloudstar. Other brands in the White Bridge Pet Brands portfolio include Dogs Well, Cats Well, and Buddy Biscuits. So at this point, we have a pretty good understanding of where Tiki Cat is coming from as a brand, but we still haven't talked a lot about what types of food they offer. The Tiki Cat lineup is pretty large, offering over 40 different varieties, with most of them being wet foods. They also offer a few different dry foods, but overall this brand is really emphasizing high moisture foods, whether that's in the form of mousses, broths, canned food, or even raw food. Regardless of format, Tiki Cat Foods emphasize this idea of species-appropriate, carnivore-appropriate nutrition. They are distinctly meat-based foods that offer pretty generous amounts of protein in each recipe. For example, Tiki Cat says that their wet foods may be as much as 95% protein and their dry foods may be as high as 44% protein. So overall, their foods are quite high protein compared to some of the competition. So again, they're offering a really generous variety of recipes and those are broken down into a few different lines. So their dry food is all a part of the Born Carnivore line. These foods, again, average about 44% protein and all of them are free of corn, rice, potatoes, and wheat. Their dry foods are baked rather than extruded, and while it's not clear if this has any real nutritional effect on the food, it does set them apart from most of their competition. Probably their most popular line is the Luau line, which features flaked shredded chicken, sometimes with added flaked fish as well. These foods are very flaky, very moisture rich foods set in a loose light broth and um, they're extremely high moisture, low fat, high protein foods. Then we have the grill line, which is similar to the luau line, but features fish rather than chicken as its primary ingredient. You're also going to see toppers like prawns and shrimp on top of these foods. They also have the after dark line, which includes organs in addition to muscle meat. Foods in the Aloha Friends line feature shredded chicken or tuna and also contain some pumpkin. Foods in the velvet line are smooth mousses appropriate for cats with dental issues or those who otherwise just enjoy uh, lapping up their food. And then Tiki Cat also offers a small selection of life stage specific foods for kittens and seniors. Finally, Tiki Cat has recently introduced a line of raw food. So these are foods made from a combination of muscle meat and organs with some bone broth as well as natural bones with the exception of their lamb recipe, which is bone free. So overall, whether you're looking at a dry, wet, or raw food, all Tiki Cat products are generally pretty rich in meat ingredients with minimal carbohydrates content. They tend to be rather low in fat as well, and they don't contain any of those ingredients like artificial colors, artificial flavors, and potentially harmful preservatives that I know a lot of people are looking to avoid in their cat's food. So overall, it looks like these foods are pretty species appropriate and pretty high quality options from a nutritional standpoint. And it also appears that they're being manufactured according to relatively stringent quality standards as well. So the foods are made in Thailand in manufacturing facilities that the company describes as award-winning um, human-grade canning plants. Tiki Cat explains that their ingredients are sourced as close to the manufacturing facilities as possible. The company partners with suppliers who are part of the International Seafood Sustainability Foundation and which support conservation initiatives that help to preserve marine environments. So overall, while it's really hard to say if Tiki Cat is really living up to these promises of 
superior ingredient quality and stringent quality control standards in their manufacturing facilities, it does seem that they're doing a fairly good job. So Tiki Cat Foods have never been recalled. It's been 15 years since the brand started. But I don't think that we can fully understand what Tiki Cat has to offer without taking a little bit of a closer look at a couple of their recipes. So out of the products that I purchased, I've chosen to talk a little bit more about two recipes. One from their Born Carnivore dry food line and another from their ever popular Luau line of wet food. So the first one that I want to talk about is their Puka Puka Luau Chicken Consomme. So this food's primary ingredients are chicken, chicken broth, and sunflower seed oil as a source of fat. That's it. Uh, the food also contains an array of vitamins, minerals, and amino acids added to make the food nutritionally complete. But overall, it's an incredibly straightforward food. When you crack open a can, you're just going to see shredded chicken meat and this thin, unthickened broth. So I like that the food seems to be virtually carbohydrate free. Again, cats are capable of metabolizing carbohydrates, but there is some evidence that excess of carbohydrate consumption could potentially increase your cat's risks of some health issues. And I also appreciated that the food is a meat-based product with plenty of protein to keep your cat healthy. At the same time, the food is a little bit lacking on animal-derived fats. Because it only contains that sunflower seed oil, it lacks the diversity of fatty acids that you would see in an animal-derived fat. So if the food had, for example, contained salmon oil, it would contain omega-3s and omega-6 fatty acids um, that could contribute to your cat's overall health, and which are, again, in line with a species-appropriate meat-based diet. And besides the fact that this fat is plant-based, there's just not a lot of it. So the food appears to be about 13% fat, which is significantly lower than the roughly 46% fat content that you would see in your cat's um, prey-based diet. And besides potentially not having enough fat, the food might also not have quite enough fiber content. Because it doesn't have any sources of fiber, the food might be a little bit too digestible. In other words, it doesn't provide the sources of indigestible matter that are needed to promote healthy digestion. So overall, this is a very straightforward meat-based food that could be an excellent choice for cats with IBD who need a really straightforward ultra-digestible diet, or cats with diabetes who need a really low carbohydrate diet, or cats who need to lose weight and could benefit from this type of low-fat, low-carbohydrate food. That being said, I think that for most cats, it might be a little bit too low in fat and a little bit too low in fiber. My cats only eat this food for a short period of time, so I wasn't able to monitor the way that it really affected their overall well-being. But I think that for long-term feeding, I would opt for something with a little bit more indigestible matter and a little bit more fat, especially animal-derived fat. Now the next food that I want to look at is one of their dry foods from the Born Carnivore line. It's their Chicken Luau Grain-Free Dry Cat Food. So this food is primarily a chicken-based food. It contains deboned chicken as the first ingredient, followed by chicken meal, as well as dehydrated chicken as an additional source of animal-derived nutrition. It contains dried egg product as another protein source and source of nutrition, and then it uses tapioca starch as its primary binding agent. The food also contains some ground flaxseed as well as chickpeas and peas. Unlike the last recipe that we looked at, this food contains a couple of different sources of animal-derived fat, which are chicken fat and salmon oil, both good sources of uh, the fatty acids that your cat needs. Overall, at roughly 52.5% protein, 22.8% fat, and 24.7% carbohydrates on a dry matter basis, this food offers a pretty good distribution of protein, fat, and carbohydrates. It's a little bit on the lower fat side, and it's definitely lower in carbohydrates than your typical dry food. That being said, it still wouldn't be considered the species-appropriate ideal for your cat. My cat's particularly forest, who is a little bit more of a kibble enthusiast, um, really enjoyed this food. I also paired it with a couple of different food toppers from Tiki Cat, and it was a big hit with my cat forest. So overall, I think that if you're looking for a somewhat higher quality dry food for your cat, um, this could be a good option to consider. So if you were to try out Tiki Cat, how much would it cost for you to be feeding your cat this food each day? 
So assuming that you have a typical 10 pound cat who needs about 200 calories per day, it looks like the wet food is going to cost somewhere in between $3.42 and $4.86, depending on which line you're purchasing from. And then like most cat food brands, you're going to find that Tiki Cat's dry foods are significantly cheaper than their wet foods. So you could probably feed your cat the born carnivore kibble for about 50 cents per day. So after looking at everything that we've covered so far in this video, is Tiki Cat going to be a good choice? Overall, Tiki Cat seems to be doing a great job of offering species appropriate, carnivore appropriate nutrition for cats. You're going to find a nice wide selection of options, all of which contain plenty of animal derived protein and not a ton of those carbohydrates that could potentially contribute to diabetes and just are not necessary in your cat's diet. Considering that the foods are made from these human-grade ingredients, it does seem that they are held to somewhat higher standards um, than some other products on the market. That being said, Tiki Cat foods aren't for everyone. They tend to be pretty low in fat and calories as well as fiber, assuming that you're looking at their wet foods. This can be a little bit of an issue for some cats, but it does also mean that it could be a good choice for cats with digestive sensitivities as well as those who need to lose weight. And finally, a big drawback of Tiki Cat is that it is so expensive. Part of the reason I think why Tiki Cat is so expensive is because you're paying for water. You're going to need to feed your cat more of this food in order to reach their calorie needs which means that obviously the price per day is going to go up. So if you're looking to save money on your cat's food, you might want to look for something a little bit more calorically dense um, to get your price down a bit. So overall, according to the All About Cat standard, I'm going to give them a nine out of 10 in terms of species appropriateness, a 10 out of 10 in terms of ingredient quality, a seven out of 10 in terms of product variety, five out of 10 on price, an eight out of 10 in terms of customer experience, and a 10 out of 10 in terms of recall history. So overall, I'm going to give Tiki Cat a 49 out of 60 rating or an A minus grade. This is definitely a brand that I would recommend and consider for my own cats. So that's about it for our review of Tiki Cat Food. I hope that it, you found it helpful and that it helped you understand whether or not Tiki Cat could be a good choice for your cat. If you're interested in learning more about Tiki Cat, you can use the links in the cards or in the description to read our complete written review on All About Cats. You'll also find links in the description to the products mentioned here in case you'd like to check them out for yourself. Of course, while you're in the description, you'll see a link to sign up for our free recall alert program, which allows you to receive alerts every time there's another pet food recall in the United States. It's a free and effortless way to stay informed and keep your cat safe. So again, I hope that you found this video helpful. If you have any questions about Tiki Cat, please let me know about it in the comments and I'll try to respond to you as soon as possible. If you found this video helpful, please give it a like. And if you're interested in more, cat food brand reviews, product reviews, buyer's guides, and information on all things cats, please do subscribe to the channel and hit the notification bell so you get the news every time we release a new upload. Thank you so much, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.